Welcome to E Online, your guide to knowing and loving English as foreign or second language. I am Professor Keating from the Department of English, Foreign Languages and Linguistics of PUP and I am so excited to introduce you to Sir Rolly's lesson about phonetics. Are you ready? Introduction to English Language System Lesson 2, Introduction to Phonetics Part 1. In this lesson you will learn about the definition of phonetics and its nature, the phonetic characteristics of the English language, the different consonant and vowel sounds, and phonetic symbols and their sounds through the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, and the speech organ. Listen how your instructor reads the following. So, what is phonetics? It is the study of speech and sound. When we listen and speak, we normally segment speech into parts and know the structure of words. It is a science that aims to describe the sounds of different languages. Phonetics has three domains. First, articulatory phonetics deals with how the speech organ produces the sounds of language. Secondly, acoustic phonetics explores the physical properties of the sounds of language. Finally, the auditory phonetics explains how listeners receive the sounds of language. Notice the sounds versus spelling relationship in the following English words. What can you say about the order of letter I and letter E in the words believe and receive? What about the sound of letter I in the word machine as compared to how it sounds like in the word shine? What does this show about the sounds versus the spelling of the English words? What are your observations? One of the characteristics of the English phonemes is the inconsistency of the spelling as compared to how it sounds like. This means that most of the time, you do not spell English words according to how you say them. Pattern may be seen when you are to compare the spelling and sounds of words but there are still many English words whose sounds are not that exactly seen in their orthography or spelling. Say for example, words like phoenix, laugh, whistle, and mug are not spelled as how you actually hear them. Unlike the Filipino language, what you hear is more likely how you should spell or write the word. Now, try to pay attention to the sounds of letter A in the following words. How many sounds or phonemes have been represented by letter A in this slide? What did you realize about the way letters or symbols represent the sounds in the English words? Now, look at how the consonants were treated in the following words. In the word room, how many times did letter O appear? What is the sound of the two letter O in the word room? What about in the word cheese? Which letters represent the sounds of CH in the word cheese? What about in the word tough? What is the sound of letters G and H in the word tough when combined together? In the word together, what is the sound of the combined letters T and H? What about the letters P and H in the word phone? When pronouncing the word through, can you still hear the sounds of letter G and letter H separately? What about in the word goals, how do letters O and A sound like? What about letters E and A in the word real? Your observations are right. There are letters in the English language that may be combined or repeated to represent one sound. Let us read the following words orally and notice what happened to the sounds of some of the letters that were actually spelled. You are right. As you use English through the years and spell the words after, it is evident that some words that are present in their orthography or spelling may not be heard or pronounced as you speak them. Do you want to learn the codes for better pronunciation and learn various accents? 
I am sure you do. This will also be a great benefit for you when you graduate in AB English Language Studies. Employers prefer those who can represent the company very well through speech or oral communication. Now, let me introduce you to the International Phonetic Alphabet, your gateway to understanding the language sounds deeper than ever. The International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, is a standard guide created by the International Phonetic Association. It has a notation system that contains symbols for the sounds that are used in human spoken language. The symbols are useful in learning the sounds of any language. It was created back in 1886 and has been updated in 2005. IPA has a chart that contains 107 letters, 52 diacritics, and 4 prosodic marks. Following shows the portion of the said chart. Let us get to know the consonant sounds. Consonants are produced as air from the lungs is pushed through the glottis, the opening between the vocal cords, and out the mouth. They are classified according to voicing, aspiration, nasal, oral sounds, places of articulation and manners of articulation. Voicing is determined according to the vibration of the vocal folds. Only three sounds in English have aspiration, the sounds B, P, and T. An extra puff of air is pushed out when these sounds begin a word or stressed syllable. Hold a piece of paper close to your mouth when saying the words pin and spin. You should notice extra air when you say pin. Aspiration is indicated in writing with a superscript H, as in P with an H. Nasal sounds are produced when the velum, the soft palate located in the back of the roof of the mouth, is lowered, and air is passed through the nose and mouth. Oral sounds are produced when the velum is raised and air passes only through the mouth. Let us get to know the consonant sounds. Consonants are produced as air from the lungs is pushed through the glottis, the opening between the vocal cords, and out the mouth. They are classified according to voicing, aspiration, nasal, oral sounds, places of articulation and manners of articulation. Voicing is determined according to the vibration of the vocal folds. Only three sounds in English have aspiration, the sounds B, P, and T. An extra puff of air is pushed out when these sounds begin a word or stressed syllable. Hold a piece of paper close to your mouth when saying the words pin and spin. You should notice extra air when you say pin. Aspiration is indicated in writing with a superscript H, as in P with an H. Nasal sounds are produced when the velum, the soft palate located in the back of the roof of the mouth, is lowered, and air is passed through the nose and mouth. Oral sounds are produced when the velum is raised and air passes only through the mouth. Let us read the following parts of the speech organ, nasal cavity, alveolar ridge, nose, lips, teeth, tongue tip, tongue blade, palate, glottis, oral cavity, velum, uvula, tongue back, pharyngeal cavity, epiglottis, vocal folds, larynx or voice box. For the second time, nasal cavity, alveolar ridge, nose, lips, teeth, tongue tip, tongue blade, palate, glottis, oral cavity, velum, uvula, tongue back, pharyngeal cavity, epiglottis, vocal folds, larynx or voice box, amazing. Bilabials, 
pa, ba, and um, are produced by closing the lips together to restrict the air from flowing freely out of your lips. Meanwhile, labiodentals for f and v are produced when the bottom lip or labio touches the upper teeth. Hence, this is called dental or teeth. Interdentals for soft th and hard th theta is produced when the tongue is placed between your upper and lower teeth. Alveolars for t, d, n, s, z, l, r are produced by raising the tongue to the alveolar ridge in some way. Palatals, sharp jar, sharp duja, and ya are produced by raising the front part of the tongue to your palate. Feelers, ka, ga, and ng are produced when you raise the back of the tongue to the soft palate of velum. Uvulas, ra, qua, this is produced when you raise the back of your tongue to the uvula. Glottals, h, these are produced when you restrict the airflow through an open glottis, h, or when you stop the air completely at your glottis, a glottal stop. Vowels are produced by a continuous airstream and all are voiced, at least in English. Japanese does have voiceless vowels, however. They are classified according to the height of the tongue, part of tongue involved, and position of the lips. The tongue can be high, mid, or low, and the part of the tongue used can be front, central or back. Only four vowels are produced with rounded lips and only four vowels are considered tense instead of lax. The sound, a, would be written as a low back lax unrounded vowel. Many languages also have vowels called diphthongs, a sequence of two sounds, vowel plus glide. Examples in English include oi in boy and ow in cow. In addition, vowels can be nasalized when they occur before nasal consonants. A diacritic mark is placed over the vowel to show this. The vowel sounds in b and bean are considered different because the sound in bean is nasalized. Manner of articulation refers to the way the mainstream is affected as it flows from the lungs going out of the mouth and nose. Manner of articulation may be voiceless and voiced. Voiceless consonants are produced through the vocal cords part. In this consonant, the air flows freely through the glottis. Voiced consonants are produced when the vocal cords vibrate together as I9R passes through. You will know if you are producing a voiced or voiceless consonant by touching the front side of your vocal cord. When you feel that something vibrates, it is voiced. When there is no vibration as you produce the consonant, it is voiceless. Vowels are classified by how high or low the position of your tongue is. It may also be classified by knowing whether the tongue is in front, or back of the mouth, or, whether the lips are rounded or not. Now, let us look at the following vowels and their IPA sound symbols. Take a look at the diphthongs too. This is the end of part 1, of the introduction to phonetics. Task 1 for online student category only. Be able to copy the following questions, and write your answers on a piece of paper or, on the page of your notebook then, be able to take a clear shot of your written answers, together with the answers in the next task. Write your name, course, year, and section, and the date of submission on top of the paper just like, what you did in lesson 1, tasks 1 and 2. Submit the image of your answers to the assigned class officer, on or before the deadline, that has been set by your course instructor, Sir, Rowley. Task 2. On your notebook or on a clean sheet of paper, be able to write the phonetic symbols for the following words. 
Make it sure that you enclose each symbol with two slashes. Task 3. On your notebook or on a clean sheet of paper, be able to copy the speech organs diagram below, and supply the names only, of the missing parts, and not those parts with existing labels already. After learning about the sounds and symbols, try to read the following quotable quote which is written in IPA symbols. Congratulations! Once again, this has been Professor Keating. See you next time for more learning concepts about English language sound system. I hope that you have learned from today's lesson. On behalf of the Department of English, Foreign Languages and Linguistics of PUP, thank you very much and keep learning. Happy tasking!